This is the population unit. This is broken up into four main parts, but I've split it up into six smaller part sections. Um, and yeah, just go through them at your own pace. I'm gonna record a couple together. We're gonna to start with natural increase and measurements and influence over fertility rates and mortality rates. So population or the study of demographics um, has been going on for a while, but the most significant thing that's happening here is that we see a population spike. So, you know, we've got 10,000 years here, the population almost stayed the same. Uh, we get to AD and we get to like 1000 then AD and we see that there's a bit of a increase and then we reach our first billion by 1804. So it takes so many thousands of years just to get to that stage um, and then we get up to 7.9 by today. So it took thousands and thousands of years to get up to 1 billion and then suddenly it just spikes after that. So 200 years has added on um, almost an extra 7 billion, right? So we're gonna look at the patterns, why these things are happening around the world, what are the stresses that occur because of it, and what governments and uh, what's, what are governments doing about it as well. So if we look in a smaller time frame here from 1800 to what we anticipate by 2100, we see a couple of things has changed. Well, one, there's a massive spike, and uh, from that point, we see that it rises then again in the mid 1900s. And then we can see that we anticipate it can veer a number of ways. It can continue to increase at the same rate. It can level off slowly, uh, but surely, which is in the yellow there, um, the UN medium. And then we can see the anticipated UN low where the population peaks around 2050 and then begins to crash and fall back down. So three of these are actually possible, and we're going to discuss a little bit as to why they are possible as well. Different countries are also going through different rates of change. So a lot of this in terms of between the 1800s and 2020 is roughly showing us um, a big increase. And there's a few reasons for that. We have basically a lot more resources. So that's the first thing. The Industrial Revolution gave us engines gave us the ability to trade more, to travel more. It gave us the ability to produce more agriculturally than ever before. Um, technology advancements then, when we think about things like healthcare, for example, we have far more greater um, technology there. And this allows us then to prolong our lives, live for longer, get rid of some uh, easily preventable diseases, for example. So we've got lots of things that help with that, like vaccinations. Um, and yeah, we see that food security comes into it there as well. So the basics of having food security, and if we think about it like safe, clean drinking water, those two combined would have transformed countries in the 1800s. Um, you're removing the potential for disease, hunger, malnutrition, your whole body then functions a bit better. So we're prolonging life, we're ensuring that young infants live for longer, and this causes the population to rise. We also see that there is a greater distribution of wealth. So the standard at which we live by today, back in the 1800s, would only have been enjoyed by a very few, a very select few, the top 1%. But that's the kind of average way that most people live today. You have running electricity, maybe you've got access to hot water, you have uh, fuel enough to power your cooker and you've got convenience stores around you, for example. If you have those things, you're living so much better than some of the wealthiest people in 1800, right? So this means you've got more security and you've got more resources and this causes the population to spike. Now with this as well, we mentioned globalization. So globalization is the exchange or economic and social exchange uh, from around the world and cultural and it connects us. So because of that, we don't have um, we do still have wars, but we haven't had a world war in quite a while. And as you can see from 1950s, we've managed to spike quite rapidly. So globalization has meant that kind of everybody wins by working together and there's economic and social prosperity because of this. It also means that we can share more resources. So countries aren't limited to the resources that are just inside their own countries, right? So now they can trade and uh, they can grow economically much, much faster. The exchange of information that comes with that means that we've learned so much. So if we go back to the idea of medical care, what we know about the body, different diseases, how to prevent them, 
that would have changed a lot since the 1800s, right? Medical practice would have changed a great deal. And with that exchange of information, and we're now going into the information era, means that usually we gain access to better resources and usually we are able to coexist with neighbors from very different cultures and backgrounds that we might not have been able to before. So these are causing populations to explode basically in the last 200 years and will continue to grow somewhat over the next while. Now, if we look at these trends um, in HICs, MICs, and LICs, they're all a little bit different. So HIC, a high-income country, middle-income country, and low-income country. These are terms that we use constantly uh, in this course. There's going to be other terms that are used throughout, and I'll explain them as we go. But this is one dictated by the World Bank, just to look at the sort of level of uh, GDP um, per capita, or the amount of income coming into people. And as that rises, then they might get out of an LIC status and into an MIC status. Um, it just depends. And then MICs, they're distinct. There's lots of different types of countries that are different levels of MIC, an upper and a lower. Um, so the vast majority of countries are HICs and MICs. And then we do still have quite a few LICs left. <clears throat> Now, if we look at this one, we're going to divide them into two, just because the way the graph is made, it's quite an interesting one. So if we think about it, if we, think, we call the least developed countries here, if we think about them as the LICs for a moment, and we just have them as the LICs, and the light green then, let's have them as the MICs, and then let's have the more developed countries as the HICs. So we tend not to use, um, more and less developed anymore. We can talk about uh, more economically and less economically developed countries. That's what you would have used in IGCSE. But here we divide them up into three distinct categories and we can see that the three of them are moving in very different ways. So the more developed countries, they're after growing, but since the 1950s, they sort of leveled off and they're slightly growing, but it's very, very slow. And we see that the uh, MICs then, they're growing very, very rapidly Okay, they're growing very rapidly here, and that's set to continue for the next while, right? So this is into anticipating 2020 and 2050. So that's still coming up, but we see at the end by 2050, it's going to start sort of like leveling out as well. And we might predict that the growth might level out too. LICs though are just getting off the ground. They're starting to grow very, very rapidly here. And we see the gap opening up a lot then around now between MICs and LICs. And that's true. We would see like much higher um, birth rates. So lots more babies per person um, would be born in LICs rather than MICs in a lot of cases. So that's, uh, yeah, we'll get into that, but that's what we're seeing in general in the trends and that's what we expect to continue is that will grow for another while before that levels out. So, okay guys, if you like, please subscribe and let me know if you have any questions and I'll be happy to answer them. I hope that helped. If you wanna continue learning, the rest of the course is below in our link. Um, you can sign up and learn there through all these videos. There's over 10 hours of videos of the content. Um, and this teaches you everything about the case studies, the concepts in each section, and you can just take it at your own pace. Um, within each course, then you'll get a PDF printout, some short questions and a video.